Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. I'd like to welcome everyone, old and new subscribers. Good to have you here once again. Please check the three dots menu just at the top of your phone or look along the bottom row of the type of device that you might be using, a laptop or a tablet, and look for the cog icon. Click that and then click the word quality so that you can upgrade the quality of the video to 720p or 1080p so that you can have a good clear picture to work with. Today I am delivering a live prophetic word that the Lord gave me yesterday. I was not able to make the video yesterday because of time, but the prophetic word is live on the blog. And to those who have been following this channel for even five minutes, uh, this word will not be new or surprising to you at all. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 9, which is where the Lord always has me, constantly speaks many of these verses to me concerning the United States. And it's never the good part where it says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. God always starts speaking about the United States from verses 10 and downwards. And today the words that I'm bringing are verses 10, 11, and 12. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and spur his enemies on the Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Now, this may be your first time hearing me read this passage, but like I said, to those who have been with the channel for a month or more, this has probably popped up on quite a few videos and also as the header verse or the header discussion on quite a few of the blog posts. I like to say before I go any further that for you to get the best benefit out of the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog YouTube channel, I really do recommend that you always look in the description below to see the prophetic link itself, the link that goes back to the blog, and always go back and read the prophecy for yourself. I say this for a number of reasons, but I think the most pressing reason is this. I've already said that due to constraints of time and also because I fully understand the parameters, the, li the, the, the limits that God has placed on me, which is that God has consigned me to bring out his prophetic word. The Lord God, for reasons that are known only to himself, has decided to deposit with me, Celestial, this one woman here on this channel, a very wide range of prophetic words that capture a lot of things pertaining to the end times. Occasionally, the Lord will show me things that happened very long ago. He will show me historical things, but usually only in a sense where it gives context to the things that will happen, that are happening either now, the things that will happen immediately after this time, or the things that will happen very much further in the future. But because I understand the parameters that the Lord has given me, which is that he said to me, Celestial, I will put my word in your mouth and then you will speak to them what I give you. You will not fear them, but you will speak to them what I give you and my word will be with you. I have been doing this for at least on camera for a few months, but the Lord has been speaking to me. The prophecy that I'm bringing here, they date back all the way from 2012. And even before then, the Lord has been using me in this regard. However, if you think that the best way that you can an get answers to the questions that you have would be to constantly come and perhaps have a mini meltdown in the comments section, that's not actually going to benefit you at all. I always say on the blog that reading and absorbing is a lot better. I personally prefer the written words, the written prophetic words, because I take the time to study them and see where they slot into and line up with scripture. You will not get a holistic education of the end times through the comments section. 
It's absolutely not going to happen. And in fact, a lot of the time, this speaks to the type of culture that a lot of the church has been raised up in, if they've been raised up at all by proper shepherds, pastors, and leaders. They've been raised up in and they've come to expect, which is that just through the offhand question, well, what does this mean? That you'll get an answer to things that are actually very far reaching and that are going to affect you your physical body as in whether you live or die in the times that are coming and your children, your home, the people that you live, your community, there has to be deeper digging than this. The comment section is not going to hand you milk through which you can deepen your understanding of the master's words and prepare your spirit for long term changes and adjustments that even if they don't come to the rest of the world, which they will, they are absolutely coming to the United States of America. The prophecy that I have been sent to read today, which came with the prophetic word that I just read out, absolutely cements that. The title of that prophecy is, I have not forgotten. And that is how the Lord started my day yesterday at 7 a.m. Celestial, I have not forgotten. Speak to them and tell them that I have not forgotten America and I will judge her to the fullness of all that I have said. If you don't know what that all means, I invite you to visit the master's voice by using the link below for this prophetic word and go and check it out for yourself. I don't think there's a single positive thing on that website and I'm nearing 300 prophecies so far that the Lord has given me. There may be one or two that speak comfort, but the majority of them are jarring. Very many of them are revelatory, meaning that they are of an exposing nature. They show hidden and secret things that take place in this country and sometimes around the world, and people don't know that they're happening. These things are hidden and secret, but all things are laid bare before the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have this thing where prophecy videos are how you're getting your updates, I don't really have much to say on that. But there's a people out there who understand that this channel is just one small piece in a much larger puzzle that God is working on in all our lives. This is a place to learn. This is a place to be apprised of information, which means be made aware of information that God wants you to know. If you are an American, God wants you to know these things, to understand that he is not playing around. He is serious. It doesn't matter what the, the other friends out there are saying in the so-called prophetic space. Here, God is bringing a hard word. Here, God is bringing a judging word. Here, God is bringing a serious word. And he wants those who are equally serious to listen and to be aware. So this verse here in um, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 10 and 12, briefly, this top verse uh, verse 10, bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild. The sycamores were cut down, but we will replace them with stronger trees. This is an expression of arrogance of a nation that has been judged. So the nation in question here is Israel, but God is sending this verse to America to let her know this is your conduct. This is how you act. This is your normal behavior towards me. I have sent you various judgments, but all you do is defy them. Nothing in you repents. All you do is focus on rebuilding yourself and styling yourself as even stronger, bigger, and better than before. I'm sure none of us over the age of 10 are strangers to the American propaganda machine. Whenever there's a conflict in the international space, or as this verse was used in the very tragic circumstances of 9-11, whenever there's something devastating that comes to the nation, the nation has a few reactions. First is an outburst of anger coupled with reeling and shock. And that shock is usually rooted in the fact that America doesn't, doesn't think that anyone can touch her. 
She never does. Whenever she goes into international skirmishes and there's any nation that even managed to land one or two blows, she's always initially very angry and shocked. And I don't think that's any different from how any of us would react when we are slapped. But then after that comes a very strong surge of pride and usually to allow for the very powerful revenge tactics that will be taken. What happens here is that there's a public campaign to stir up the hearts of the people, to rage. How dare they? They touched us. We're the greatest nation in the world. And before you know it, people are foaming at the mouth and they sign off on whatever it is that the military wants to do after that. And then before you know it, other people are getting bombed, wiped off the map, and this is how it has already always gone. And so verse 10 is God saying that whenever judgments come against you, floods, famine, or a slap in an international altercation, this is what you always do. You always start this build back bigger, build back better campaign. And that is your hallmark and trademark arrogance. But now God says in verse 11, this is what I'm going to do. This time, I'm going to be the one to cheer your enemies on. And you don't want me on the opposite team. But that's exactly what I'm going to do. And God has done this to Israel many times in the Bible by sending the king of Assyria or sometimes by sending the king of Babylon. And they would utterly destroy the place. Even the Romans came and utterly destroyed Jerusalem and messed up Judea and took them all into palpable slavery, forcing them to pay heavy taxes and basically to live for many decades under Roman rule. And so God says, this time I will be the one who set up your enemies against you and I will spur them on, meaning that I will make them very vigorous against you and they will come out against you with such a raw power, such a raw force and such a raw hatred that you will be stunned and trying to ask yourself, where's this coming from? And then he says, the Syrians will come first and the Philistines right behind them, and they will basically devour you with an open mouth. Now, God has said in many of the prophecies on the master's voice that America will be like bread for the nation of Russia and China. God has depicted in many prophecies, whether you like to hear this or not, I cannot help that. What God has given me, I will speak. And God has depicted in many, many prophetic words how Russia will spearhead an invasion, an attack, and a complete takeover of this nation. And China will be her top and foremost partner. The Lord also revealed that the nation of Ukraine, the nation of Taiwan, and one other unidentified Asian nation, which to this day, the Lord has not revealed their identity. But there's a prophecy on the blog. Uh, the picture is a dragon. Can't remember the name of it offhand, but it showed that there will be a rise of three great nations in the end times. One of those will be China, and then there will be a second one. And I think the red dragon, the red dragon was China, and there was a blue one and another one. And one of those three will be a partner to the Chinese when they come to invade this nation. And it says here that God's anger is not turned away even after he gives America over as bread to these nations. So even when they come to devour China and Russia with their allies, the Lord says that this is not the worst of what he will do to America, that there will still be more. He styles it like this. My hand is stretched out still, which means that even after I have shaken and squeezed you through these nations, I'm not done. So I've brought this particular word as a precursor to other prophecies many, many times. And if I must say, the responses are varied. Some people do listen. Some people do say, may the Lord have mercy on us. And we're praying. And some people are still stuck in the mentality of greatest nation in the world. They probably have the military industrial complex running through their veins. And so they cannot accept that there will ever come a time in American history where Russia and China will be um, technologically strong enough, militarily strong enough to come into this nation. But all I have to do to say is that if I know I have spent a lot of time perusing the Lord's words, I've been getting them for years. And even though the blog is relatively new, 
being made public, I've had a lot of time to go over these words again and again and study them. And what I can say to you as I read this prophecy entitled, I have not forgotten, is that America, you will be so weak that a little boy could fight you and win. The Lord is absolutely going to train you of all your strength. The strength of a nation doesn't come by eating physical food and working out at the gym. The strength of a nation comes when her borders are secure. The strength of a nation comes when her leaders are intelligent and honest, or at least transparent enough to involve the people in the processes of running the country. A nation is strong when her laws are just and not when they have become a slop of draconian mishmash as what we've been seeing since 2020. A nation is strong when her people are industrious, when her manufacturing, her trade, and her industry are regular and dependable. Also, though many don't consider this, consider this important, a nation is strong when she has what is known as international collateral. This is when other people, quite simply, don't hate her. I don't need to explain that any further. When people in the international space begin to resent and simmer and boil against you because of your policies, because of your behavior, because of your actions, and just because you are so arrogant, you lose international goodwill and collateral. And this is something that the Lord has shown that Vladimir Putin, who leads the nation of Russia, excels at. He excels at diplomacy. He knows how to massage the hearts of the other kings. Even though Russia is growing in primacy, Putin doesn't throw his weight around as much as this nation does. He misbehaves in his peninsula as much as America behaves, misbehaves around the world. But the difference is that Putin does not in the international space project this image that it's Russia's way or nothing. God has shown in visions and dreams that are on the blog that this man is an extremely methodical and strategic thinker. That he plans so many moves ahead that as he's playing chess with his enemies, they actually think they have a chance. But God has shown that not only is he naturally good at strategizing, but that he, God himself, just as I read in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 11, where God says, I will spur your enemies on. God has shown that he will personally see to it that Russia and China's end game is fantastic. Who can fight against the Lord? The Bible asks this often. And if you didn't know, it's a rhetorical question. The answer is nobody. Nobody can fight against the Lord. Nobody can resist the words of the Lord when they come. They land like hammer blows on the one who is being punished. And America, God has sent me to tell you that he has not forgotten. April 10th, 2021. The great city was split into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. Babylon the Great was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of his fierce wrath. Revelation 16 and 19. And so here is exactly what God said. And if you go to read the prophecy on the blog, each section of the prophecy is underlined by at least two or three prophetic words that I've received that match exactly what God was saying here. And so God started off by saying to me that Babylon will fall and that he has not forgotten. He said that nothing that he said against this country will be remanded. To remand something means to put it off until a later time. Nothing that I said will fail. At the appropriate time, I will seize America by her jaw and I will put a hook in her mouth and I will drag her down even though she makes furious furrows in the sea like Leviathan. I will avenge myself for the blood that she has spilled and the secrets that she hides from the world. America is full of deception, but at the proper time, I will lay it all bare. I will expose all the corruption and the bartering for souls that takes place at the basement level of society. I will expose the very heads of the princes, how fallen they are, how deceitful and corrupt, and how they have feet of clay. I will bring out all the masterminds behind the great deception. 
I will lay it all open before you before that great and terrible coming of the Lord. Everything that takes place in secret now will be revealed before your eyes. And then you will know that I am the Lord. Now, when God says that he will put a hook in someone's mouth, this is literally a prophetic picture of how you go fishing. Fish are probably strong in their own ecosystem, but they're nothing against humanity. They're nothing against the metal of our technology. When God says he will put a hook in someone's mouth and drag them, God is saying that power and force will be used and will come against you. That is absolutely irresistible by you. It will be like a two-year-old trying to fight their parents when their parent comes to pick them up and say, it's bath time. You can try to toddle along and you can try to wail, but there's nothing you can do. However, God does not depict America as a two-year-old here. He says that he will hook her like Leviathan and she will make furious furrows in the sea. Job chapter 41 talks about Leviathan in length, a mythical beast of extraordinary power that God shows that only he has the ability to control. And God is saying that when he hooks America in the mouth and begins to drag her to her end, he knows that she will fight and resist with the same arrogant, metal and powerful strength of Leviathan. But he says that even if she stirs up the sea until it's frothy, just like Leviathan, she cannot resist. The Lord went on to say that none of my judgments will fail. List it for them and let them be reminded. So here it is. The sea will fall on mystery Babylon. The sea will rise as a wall of water that is higher than the tops of the buildings and fall on this great harlot. By the raging waters, said the Lord, I will be avenged. I will wash America clean and remove their iniquity, which has burdened the land for generations. The tsunamis that will hit this country will be one for the record books, if anyone is around to keep records. A great flood, a personal cleansing for Babylon. In every city that still is unrepentant of sin, I will send this water to utterly uproot and destroy them, even while they are still standing. Now... As I've said in several videos, as I've said on the blog, there are people who are still back at the starting blocks and still arguing that America is not Mystery Babylon. The Lord has said that this land is Mystery Babylon and I can do no more or no less than repeat what he has said. Second is, I will put a hook in her nose and I will drag her. China and Russia will be the masters of the United States. They will overpower her internationally at first and outstrip her in the rankings. After that will come public humiliation and defeat. America will dwindle and become dim. I will put out your light, said God. I will douse your candle and I will remove your lampstand from its place. And so I already explained about having a hook put in, which means that through a series of events, circumstances, and situations that you, the one who is hooked, will be absolutely powerless to resist, God will allow China and Russia to drag this nation to a very humiliating end. Many people have come into the comments section, whether it's through sarcasm or a genuine desire to know, I can't always tell. And they have said, if tsunamis are going to drown America, why would anyone want to invade America? And all I can say is if you're not actually able to put simple events in order, then I don't know what to say. It's obvious that by the time a land is drowned, there is no use to invade it. So the natural answer to your question would be, that the invasion and enslavement that God has said will come to this nation will take place before that time. Third is this. Oh yes, um, the Lord also mentioned public humiliation and defeat and that America would lose her pride of place. And so one of the prophecies that I put here to be helpful is the prophecy ascendancy. And in that prophecy, part of what I saw in an open eye vision is I saw a female diplomat that was making a speech in one of these places where all the nations gathered. It might be the, U it might be the UN, it might be um, the WHO. There are plenty of places where they have these kind of international meetings. She was speaking and she was being utterly ignored by the audience. 
meaning that even those countries that don't speak English that need the help of the interpretation earphones that they give you, they weren't paying attention. They took the earphones out and they were wearing them looped around their necks. People were openly on their phone, replying texts and just checking stuff on Google. She managed to get through her speech, but she was extremely angry. And when she went into that little side room that they have for the keynote speaker to prepare themselves and to rest, she had a bottle of water and she was so angry that she was squeezing it and water was coming out of the bottle. And she was telling an aide, this man looked Singaporean or yeah, he did. That was the feeling I had that he was a Singaporean and she was telling him they would never do this. They would never do this when the United States speaks people listen. And the man was very quiet, wisely so, because the woman was livid. And then I saw also in that prophecy how beloved Vladimir Putin became. Many people come to the blog and argue, he's not popular now. And I have nothing to say. Because if you live in a static universe where Putin will remain as he is forever, despite the fact that God says that he will actually ascend to some unseen throne of popularity, then what must I say? Believe as you will. But in that vision, Vladimir Putin was the man of the hour. I saw him at the United Nations. This time I knew it was the United Nations because of that familiar green, green marble background that they have. And the previous speaker had just finished and then it was Putin's time and he was coming on stage. And as he did, the people basically misbehaved. These are diplomats, delegates from around the world. Some of them were presidents. They began to go, woo, woo, woo. People stood up and they gave him a standing ovation. And he, with that small smile, was waving. Thank you. Thank you so much. And he came up. After he spoke, people were pushing to get next to him, pushing to get a handshake, pushing to get his ideas and his views on this and that happening in their international space. The American diplomats were absolutely ignored. Nobody asked them anything. Nobody went up to them to talk to them about anything. All the attention was on Russia. Chinese delegates were standing there and their leader was looking at him like, that's my boy. This is a vision that the Lord gave me. You can look at it for yourself in the prophecy ascendancy. The next thing that God said will happen is that, and I hope this answers many of you, he said that the children of America will be hungry and that they will beg for bread. I have been young and now I am old, but I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. This is my promise from my word, but you are not righteous. You are not holy. You have been weighed and found wanting. Mene, mene. Therefore you will hunger in famine and you will beg for bread. Your fields are already compromised and being destroyed, and soon tragedy will hit the supply chain and there will be no more food. Woe to you in the cities, full of entitled dependents. You will have no food. No trucks will come to you bringing delicacies, and you will starve until you perish, or until you repent of your transgressions before the King of heaven and earth. There will be famine in America. No food no agriculture, no sustenance. You will go hungry, says the Lord. And so there it is. The Lord could have just said you, meaning people of the nation, but he specifically said that children will be hungry and beg for bread. The reason I emphasize this is because I'm not a parent, but if I were so blessed, I would not be so unwise as to abdicate my responsibility to teach and train up my children so strongly in the word of God that it would cut them as much as it cuts me for them to depart or deviate from the word of God even a little. Many people do not teach and train up their children for the times that are ahead. They think, my child is too young. My child doesn't get it. Nobody is asking you to tell your children that Armageddon or the end of the world or the Nephilim are coming. But what the Bible does exhort every parent to do is to train their child up in the ways of the Lord. If you train your children to love God and to honor elders and give respect to parents as it is due, your children become beloved 
of God. And that is what you are seeking to do in these end times. You are seeking to have both your children and yourself, though you be an adult of 20, 30, 50, 70, 95, watching this video, you are still a child to God. You are seeking to have your child, child, and the you child, and the me child, become beloved of God. Because to those whom are beloved, the Lord will not suffer harm. But if you abdicate the responsibility to teach your children to honor and to respect not only you, but one another, other children and other adults, and your child is just growing up like a wild willow branch that is blowing in the breeze, that child has no place before God. Your tears will not win that child a place before God. Every soul that understands sin will bear the consequences of sin. And the Lord has said here, basically, stop living in a dream world. Because here in America, when famine comes, it's not going to go, she's 12, she's only 8. When the horse of famine from the book of Revelation starts to ride, the black horse that comes and hits not only America, but the nations internationally, the horse will not differentiate based on age, race, gender, or anything else. God said that there will be rape and sexual molestation in America. I've brought this word many times before, mostly because it doesn't need to be announced in this country that rape and sexual molestation are daily bread already. All he is saying here is that the sexual crimes will increase sharply because the nation will come under a renewed attack by the forces she invites into, into her borders through her spiritual crimes. People are shacking up anywhere, everywhere, as often as they can. Marriage is becoming a flagging institution within these borders as people begin to think, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Nobody seems to have access to enough cotton to cover their bodies for reasons that I don't really understand. And the Lord says that the crimes of fornication, adultery, pornography, child molestation, sodomy, homosexuality, human trafficking, and transgenderism are breaking down the gates of America and bringing in spiritual forces that will burden the physical human beings that are in the nation. Babylon is an overflowing cup that feeds filthy doctrines to the nations until they have all become defiled. Little children now practice what they see on American TV. She has destroyed the innocence of a generation with her promiscuity and her willingness to lie with the serpent. This is Satan, obviously. Sexual crime in America will spike and there will be no way to escape it. There will be a savage hunger for flesh that comes over her citizens and they will destroy one another in painful ways. Even the young and the innocent will not be spared to the effects of these ruling demonic spirits. Flesh will be torn in America. Savagery, rape, and sexual molestation. Weeping will occur. This is the word of the Lord. Now in another prophecy the Lord gave me, he made me to understand that even the church will not be safe from this. So I cautioned strongly that please do not live your life in a risque manner. I also spoke to women and I said that in the midst of feminism and everything like that, it's easy to forget that we also have a responsibility in how we present ourselves. It's a very fallacious and common argument that we find now in the body of Christ. Women come to church dressed so inappropriately and you can't say anything to them. They always backlash and say that the church has no love. They say that they're being judged or they're being unfairly singled out for attention. You already made that statement when you came out dressed for attention. You can't then fall back and cry wolf when people try to tell you that if you would not dress like this in front of your grandfather or anyone's grandfather, you shouldn't try to dress like this in front of the holiest and most heavenly of fathers. It's far less than he deserves for God to see the daughters of Eve coming into the house of God with varied parts on display as if they're coming in for those parts to be the center of attention and not for them to put their attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. This also goes for men. The way that men are dressing nowadays, you would think that their suits are just a single body sleeve that they have to apply baby oil and then leap into the suit 
let me just be honest. None of these things honor God. They do not honor you. You dishonor your temple before others. And then you get very angry and aggravated when these things are said and said and say that you are being judged. But understand that pointing out something wrong is not judgment. The one who judges you is also the one who will pass sentencing on you. And if someone says to you, this is wrong, they don't have the power to do anything to you after that. But when the Lord Jesus comes afterwards and the day that he comes and says to you, as they said, this is wrong, understand that he will then sentence you after that judgment because you were told previously and ignored it. Human flesh excites lust one to another. That is why God says that there is a time and a place to expose it. And that is in marriage so there will be there will be a lot of violent sexual activity in america and in many of the other prophecies i, re I received the lord said that sex will be taken by force through manipulation deception and by force the lord says that the enemies of america will come up against her and they will wall her on all sides because he the lord has declared a siege against her she will struggle with failing trade and industry until she becomes a dependent she will rely on foreign aid, says the Lord. Germany, Spain, and France will feed you, and you will beg for bread. The next thing is that the Lord said that Joe Biden will be removed. There are four prophecies on the blog already showing that the Lord says that um, Joe Biden will be suddenly removed, suddenly retired. The phrase that appears in all the prophecies is retired from public life. So when you see this prophecy being fulfilled, you will actually see the news saying, unfortunate, so sad to see Joe Biden there retiring from, pri from public life. The Lord says this is how they will present it, that he is retiring. But actually, this man will be shoved in a care facility. He said, he rules for only a short time. He will be taken off stage and a woman will lead in his place. Do not think that I have forgotten. You will see this fulfilled and hard times will hit Babylon. They will think to change times and laws. Your changes will overwhelm you. Everything will shift at a fast and sudden pace and you will cry out because you cannot keep up. Joe Biden shall be removed. And so the words of the Lord are these. I read them out. For sodomy, for breaking the gate and using the body unnaturally, for murder and the aborted children that are traded for cash, for such intense selfishness and self-seeking grandiosity instead of being your brother's keeper, for wine and song, instead of shame and mourning, because you have not torn your garments and repented before the Lord. I, the Lord, have judged you and your judgment will not fail. Every word will fall upon you. Every sentence will be fulfilled. And then you will know that I have spoken. When you see these things overtake you in your powerless inability to escape them and stop them, Unless you are hidden in Christ, the judgment of Mystery Babylon is your judgment. You will bear it in equal measurement with her on the day that I visit her with fire. And so this is what the Lord said. Celestial, make it plain and remind America of her sins and that I, the Lord, have not forgotten it. And so I said that I have always done my best to make these prophetic words plain and simple because I know that people from all over the world are reading them and now watching the videos. I apologize because I do not have any other type of subtitles available to me. YouTube has taken away the automatic subtitle. And so for now, I just, I just am not able to do the extra of now going to look for Spanish subtitles. So please, if anyone out there has a channel or is Spanish speaking and can adequately or at least accurately represent what I'm saying, I do give you permission to dub the video 
honestly or put subtitles underneath it and if you want you can send it to me or you can just put it up on your own channel as spanish speaking um translation of celestial's video the master's voice as long as you give it credit i really don't mind many people write me and say send the video here send the video there the lord has given me very clear instructions how to run this channel this channel is to stay pure and dedicated to god alone not for pumping it up anywhere or trying to send it to here and there, but you are welcome to share the video wherever you want, just so more people can be warned. This is not a likes project for me or a see me project. This is, a, I hope, I sincerely hope that you are listening. I really, really hope that you are listening. This is not to frighten you. Please do not let this deter you or make you sloppy at your job. Many people become so hopeless. God does not want that. I spend so much time replying to email like this. What's the point? We're all going to die. It doesn't work like that. You cannot abdicate your responsibility for faith-filled Christian living by quitting in the middle. We're not even in the middle. We are at the beginning. You can tell we're at the beginning because I'm still able to sit here and nobody has burst through the door to take me someplace where my parents can't find me. We are at the very beginning. And the Bible says that if your faith or if your strength fails you in the evil day, then your strength is weak. The Bible says that if your faith fails you, if your strength fails you, then your strength, your faith is weak indeed. So we can't afford to be people who are fainting now at the start. We can't afford to be filled with fear just because we are starting to see what I basically called, what the Lord called the rising of the iron spider. If you haven't seen that prophecy about the iron spider, I'm going to link it in the description below because it really is a sobering prophecy and it is worth reading. The Lord showed me one particular man sitting in uh, a bucket seat that was at the center of a great mechanical beast. So if this is where the bucket seat was, then the beast had tentacles and legs sticking out all over. And at first it was low on the ground. And then all of a sudden it swung into action with so much ease. Something that had been practiced over and over again suddenly went seamlessly into effect. And all its various arms began to do their part. And this thing began to rise across the United States in particular. And this was what the, the Lord called the rise of the iron spider. We're starting to see things happen that we thought were 30 or 40 years out. And that's on us because the Lord never told us when these things would be. He just told us to be vigilant and to be watchful. And so now that these things are happening, they bring a great pressure on the heart. They bring fear on the heart. I understand that. But the Bible is not to be abdicated because of prophecy. I don't want this video to be very long, but I have to say this. You cannot throw the whole of scripture away because of prophecy. The Bible has very clear instructions of what to do when you are scared. It definitely doesn't say quit. The Bible has clear instructions to do what to do when you are confused, when, what to do when you are frightened. You and I have a responsibility to put on the full armor of God and wage a good warfare first against our fear, against whatever is causing our fear, and then against all who are the enemies of God. Those things have not gone away just because prophecies have started to happen in front of us. And so I just want to say, please do not lose your faith. If you lose your faith, you have lost the only thing that pleases God, the only thing that is the victory that overcomes this world, and the only thing that will get you into heaven. Nothing else will get you into the presence of God except your faith. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. I've delivered the prophecy. I have not forgotten. You can find all information for my ministry below. Thank you for being a supporter of this channel. Please share these videos prayerfully and thoughtfully with those that you think they would benefit or just share it to a stranger and see what they say.
Thank you and may God bless you. Take care out there and until I see you again, goodbye.